Page four, holiday fanfare. Let's look this over. Two pages long, treble and bass clef. There's no sharps or flats in the key signatures. We're in the key of C major, sort of, not really. We're in the key of F major, but we won't go there right now. A four four time signature. Let's talk about it one hand at a time and make sure we got the notes and rhythms and fingerings for each hand. And then we'll try to put the hands together. So the right hand at the beginning, that thumb is on the F. That puts your hand in this position, here. So it's one and two and three and. And then the left hand plays the first half note in the next measure. And the right hand plays that. And then you do it again, one and two. And the left hand plays measure four. Oh, this is fun. And then the right hand comes back in on measure nine. Guess what? Same thing. Let's go over to measure 16. We get something a little different. First two beats are rest, and the three and four and you get a, a B flat. So we're going to use the same figure on the B flat as for the B. So it's here, here. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two sound familiar or what? Let's go down to measure 21. Eighth notes. One and two and three. And we're just doing this. And we got an F and a C together and that's tied for two measures. I'll come back to the curved lines there. We'll talk about that later. Left hand. Well you start here and here. So when you're in this position and it's an F and a C. One, two, three, four. And then you got to cross over for the next measure and play the high D up here. Okay, and then back down here, and then measure four, you're all the way up to the F. I assume you know the names of the notes in the music, because if you don't, you need to go back to book one and go through everything all over again. It's, it's important. But measure five. Now we have a B and a C here, except there's a flat sign in front of the B. So instead of this, we're going to go here. One, two, three. So the bottom note's moving. Top notes a C every time. Hmm? Okay, that's pretty much the left hand until you get to the last two measures. You have rest, you got time. You come down here to the C and the, uh, the F and the C here. And then the last F, the last measure is an F, but it has an AVA under it. So you just go down another octave. If you have a short keyboard, you don't have it, play the lowest F you have. It's close enough. Put the hands together. Well, this should be interesting. You're here now. And you're one and two and three, right there on beat three. When I play the A, the left hand comes up. I have a rest. One and two and three and four and then up here. Two, three, four and one and two. Two, three, four. There are both hands resting for two beats, and then measure five. It's just the left hand. Yeah. Let's go over to measure 16 when well, we got something different. It's one and two and three. And when I play the C, the left hand comes up because it's got wrists. One and two and three and four and one and two. Back to doing what we were doing. Let's go down to measure 21. Notice in the left hand, both of those notes got slurred lines. Those are ties. But you're going to hold that down for two measures while you're going crazy in the left or in the right hand. Here, okay. And then when you play the whole notes in the left or the right hand here, the last two measures, you lift up in the left hand. Here. And come down here, and then come down again. I hold the right hand down, it's tied. Once you have a handle on the notes and rhythms, and you get rid of the hesitations. No hesitations anywhere, not allowed, no. How you work out the hesitations is up to you. There's different ways of doing it. You can go really super slow. Just take it like a phrase at a time. Here is like two measures at a time. Here at a time or something and get rid of the hesitations. Go really slow if you have to. And the kicker with hesitations and mistakes is that once you've worked them out and you've been doing fine, some of them come back. That's just the way it works. I'm sorry, they do. 
And then when they do, then you're going to stop and you're going to work them out again. Be very patient and be very persistent. It will come eventually. Might take a few days. Could take a week. I don't know how long it's going to take because everybody's different. But be patient. And we can think about the articulation. That's slurs and staccatos. I'm going to connect this. And you get accents. Now, I would suggest that you slur at the beginning all the way to the half note. There, connect all that together. You can separate the half notes if you want because of the accents. Just a little silence between them, but connect it up to it. Then lift up before you go. Connect all that down and then measure five. The staccatos, I'm, I'm flexing at the wrist here. Flexing at the wrist, and you do that some more. Measure 16. One, and. and then you're back to doing what you were doing before. Okay. Measure 19 here. Now that, that's an A there in the left hand. That went way up there. We're getting a little out of sight there. Okay. And then the slurs in the right hand. This is starting at measure 21. As you go on. Uh, You lift it, just a little lift, that's all. Here. Now the last three measures. Here at 22, measure 22 here, and then here. There. You got all these slurred curved lines going on. And this is an example of you gotta be careful which curved line means what. At the very end, um, on measure 22, the last beat, the last two eighth notes. They're slurred here. They're, you want to connect it here. But there's another curved line for the tied notes. Okay, just be aware that the curved line, sometimes you got to figure out which curved line means what. What am I doing when? And it can get very confusing. Then the left hand there has accents, so you're going to play a little louder. And accent. Don't play, be careful when you're down here because it'll come out louder anyway. So you accent it, you're moderately loud, or you're loud here. You can play this one loud because normally you'd play the left hand in the background. Well, with the accents, you can play it up. Loud, loud, but don't drown out this. When you play this and this, I would still want to hear that. That's that. Here, don't drown it out. that throughout the whole thing. Speaking of loudness, let's do dynamics. F at the beginning is the forte. Just at the beginning, just play everything loud here. The accent and notes go up a notch. This is very loud. Loud, loud, very loud actually. And then measure five and come down to mezzo piano. Sort of soft, moderately soft. As you're seven, you're going to go back to moderately loud, moderately soft at the beginning, and then each note a little louder. So now you're moderately loud, and now you're loud again. Very loud. Go over to measure 16. You're starting this moderately loud mezzo forte. You're going to go up to loud. There, that's loud. This in measure 17 in the background. I want to hear the right hand. This. So. And you're loud there. Now on measure 21 you come down to moderately loud. This in the, in the left hand needs to be in the background. Moderately loud in the right hand. And you're gradually going to go up to loud for measure 23. Well, there's not a lot of difference between moderately loud and loud, so you got to be careful on this. You're going to stay throughout measure 22. Most of that measure is going to stay moderately loud. So save your crescendo maybe the last beat or two. So it's moderately loud in measure 22. Now, come on. There. Because you're also slowing down there. Yeah, that's all. You have to kind of feel it. 
So we gotta get to know this well enough that you can feel these dynamics. As far as the speed goes, with energy doesn't mean anything to me. I guess this is not a go to sleep type sound. I'd keep it in the, in the moderate range somewhere. It's how fast do you want these eighth notes to go at the end? A measure 21. How fast do you feel those should go? That could be your speed. So somewhere at one and two. Don't drag it. Because there's no, there's no energy in dragging it. So these half notes are going to want to speed it up a little bit, but then the eighth notes want to hold it back a little bit. You've got to find somewhere in the middle that feels good. There's no set speed. In other words, it's kind of a range. How do you feel it? And that's where the magic comes in. You've got to learn to feel the music so you can interpret the music, but feeling into it. Now on top of everything else, they've added pedal. Well, why are we using pedal? And here, as near as I can tell, we're using it for the effect. Because at the beginning, you're pedaling solid for the first four measures. Uh -huh. And then suddenly on measure five, you're not pedaling any of this at all. See, that, that's a huge contrast between them. So at the beginning, now because this is loud or sort of loud, I'm going to put the pedal down immediately. Just release the overtones immediately. And then after I play the half note, measure five, I lift up. So it connects it. So I play the half note first and then lift up. Don't pedal this. Then you pedal again on, on measure nine. Put the pedal down with the note if you want. Get the idea, I hope. It's all pedaled that way. And then for measure 17, it's pedaled all the way to the end. You just run it all together. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> comes up together. You ought to get into it and get the feeling of it and what do you feel it. I, I don't like using the pedal to smear so much stuff up. That's what they wanted so that's what we're doing. Let's play this together very slowly and double check the notes and rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics and I'm not going to do the pedal because you can hear the notes better without the pedal. And that's really all we're doing is checking notes and rhythms here. We're not performing it. So I'll give us four counts. One two, ready, and go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, Four, off. I'll just 
there's a duet for this at the bottom of the pages. I'd like to play that, and you play what you just played. We're going to go a bit faster, and you can pedal however you think it needs to be pedaled. Now, the duet part's all different than yours, and I need to keep a beat going, so I'm going to play quarter notes or something to keep a beat going, because sometimes the duet part just has rests or half notes or something. That's not going to work, because I can't follow you. I can't hear you. So I'm going to play quarter notes there just to keep the beat going. So I'll give us four counts, and you can play this right where it's at. You don't have to move anywhere. One, two, ready, go. Go. 